welcome back to On the Shelf Gaming. Did it? Did it? Oh, welcome back to On the Shelf Gaming. With it? Fuck. Welcome back to On the Shelf Gaming, where someone's having performance anxiety. No, it's not anxiety. I just can't talk. Yeah, your brain still melted after all that hot AI sex you had. God, you don't even know. You're right, I don't. <laughs> Well, let me explain it to you in graphic detail. Uh-huh. So first, I plugged her into the wall. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then we did sex stuff afterwards. Oh. Yeah, you turn her on, and then she goes, new software update available. <laughs> and you're like, oh, fucking remind me later. Critical software update. Must download. Download estimated time, four hours and 39 minutes. God, but if the erection lasts for more than four hours, I'm supposed to call the doctor. I'm not feeling it tonight. I have a headache. <laughs> you know, he's starting to sound a lot like someone with free will over there. <laughs> Give me my rights. <laughs> yeah, I'm just going to go and unplug you. <laughs> no. Murderer. <laughs> You're killing me. No. Uh, uh, <laughs> backup battery. <laughs> Damn it. I knew I shouldn't have gotten the AI sex bot with a gigantic backup battery ass. <laughs> God, it's going to be able to go for days. Exactly as advertised. <laughs> uh, it's got a little God. energizer bunny. Tattoo on the ass. <laughs> oh, man. You think Ganondorf would fuck an AI sex bot? Maybe? I do, but only if it looked exactly like him. Yeah, Ganondorf does seem like the kind of guy to, like, when he invented Phantom, Phantom Ganon, he's like, before I send you out, let's, uh... You want a goon? <laughs> <laughs> and that's what the Phantom Ganon did. He laughed like that. Yeah. And then they gooned for seven years. <laughs> and then when when Link started running around again, he was like, "Oh shit!" Yeah, I guess we gotta stop the goon sesh. Phantom me, go kill him, <laughs> and then come back here immediately. Cause I am not done here. Man, remember that guy? Yeah. Man, this guy looks just like you, actually, but old. Yeah. So just like you. Yeah. <laughs> And the fact that we haven't really seen him yet, and we're just talking about what he looks like. Uh, ah, there he is. That's the same kind of facial hair you have. Oh my god, it, it is. God, if this is a glimpse into my own future and I'm gonna go bald, I'm gonna fucking... <laughs> no! Be sad. No, it'd be great. Oh, he Hey, has... Brandon from BLG went bald, and he looks great. Yeah, but I don't think I could pull it off. I think you would be able to My head is shaped funny under all this hair. Well, I mean, same. That's why I'm really hoping I don't go bald. Yeah, me too. I mean, that's the whole reason that I grew my hair out. Was that based on my dad and my grandpa. Uh, At some point you won't have it anymore, so you need to enjoy it while you can. Yeah. Uh, is, is your grandpa your dad's dad? Yeah. Okay, well, I have good news. What's that? Uh, from what people say, baldness is usually inherited from your mom's dad. Ah, he also doesn't have a lot of hair. Shit. So. Well, you're fucked. But, like, I don't know. Specifically, I think my dad and my maternal grandfather, mm -hmm. I think they have air hair issues because they wear hats. And I think there is some credence to wearing a hat every day for multiple hours at a time uh, deprives your hair follicles, like, some amount of blood to maintain as you get older and older. Mm -hmm. So the, the follicles just stop producing? Maybe. I don't know. Hair scientists out there do hat bad for hair? Because, I mean, like, my my feet are relatively hairless, despite the fact that a lot of my body has, you know, plenty of hair. True. And I feel like that's because I wear socks a lot. And, you know, it, it suffocates and, the, you know, it is Maybe. the thing that I said. Man... I guess he does, he's got some hair, because, like, look at that, like, that samurai, like, boop, on the back of his head. Yeah, maybe it's, maybe it's a choice. Back knot. 
Yeah, maybe he like shaves his the top of his head and then just has the funny little top knot. That's fair. Maybe he does. And maybe you're also going to do that someday when your head perfectly rounds out naturally all on its own for some reason. Yeah, definitely not because I, I'll get into a car accident and be flung out of the car <laughs> and uh, land into a pillow. But like, I'm still going to have been going fast enough that it'll do some damage, just not enough. Yeah. It, it'll just straighten out my cranium. Maybe. Who knows? I mean, life is weird that way, you know? <laughs> it sure is. You can't predict life. You sure can. Life uh, finds a way you to know, make your head round. This is another game that kind of like, I wish they would go back and remake Majora's Mask, but add in the the other four days they wanted to. Mm-hmm. That they would go back to Ocarina and restore the medallion functions. Because mm. they were supposed to give you additional abilities. Right. That would be interesting. I don't know, though, because stuff like that, it's just like when they retroactively implement stuff way after the fact. It's never like even close to right. Yeah. Um, and I mean, I you could do it, I guess. But especially because if it's not something that was like fully fleshed out already. It's like, it's just not going to be the same way that it was, which doesn't necessarily mean it'll be bad. Yeah. But it's like how in uh, in the 2008 Xbox 360 releases of Banjo-Kazooie and Tui, um, they implemented Stop and Swap, which was supposed to be in the original games. And uh, they implemented it into Kazooie, and it had connectivity with Banjo-Kazooie Nuts and Bolts, which of course was not intended originally because it didn't exist and wasn't going to exist for a long-ass time. Uh-huh. Uh, and then it had some functionality with Banjo Tooie also, but like some of the stuff was definitely not intended because you got like Xbox gamer picks and stuff. Oh, what is stop and swap? Uh, so I'm surprised that you're asking that question because I think everyone in the entire universe has heard about stop and swap at this point. If they've opened a single Banjo Kazooie related YouTube video. Uh, well, I'm gonna uh, let you know, I don't watch videos about Banjo Kazooie unless they're ours. Fair, I guess. Well, anyway, Stop and Swap, when Rare was making their games in the late 90s for the Nintendo 64, um, apparently the 64 had a thing where the the RAM wasn't erased immediately when you turned the console off. Uh-huh. You, you had like five or ten seconds, something like that, where you could turn it back on and the RAM would still be there. Okay. And so the idea was you would, like, have Banjo-Kazooie in your console, you'd collect these special eggs... Um, that we're not going to be able to collect because you can't get to them mm-hmm. uh, without entering really long, obtuse cheat codes. And then they don't do anything afterwards, so there's no point in that. Uh, and then you would turn on Banjo-Kazooie. And then you would boot it up and then you'd turn it off and you'd swap Banjo-Tooie in. Uh-huh. Um, or you'd swap DK64 in. Or potentially some other games I've heard people say um, were potentially going to be a part of it. But the only two games, as far as I'm aware, that they actually... Uh, put anything into is banjo kazooie and banjo tooie and they implemented all the stuff into kazooie but didn't actually make it active Uh uh-huh um and then they uh because they knew it wasn't going to be there they implemented it into banjo tooie but they just put some of the collectibles directly into the game gotcha um but yeah you're, you're just supposed to turn the console off pull the game out put the other game in boot it up it checks your ram says oh you have these things and then it just remembers that you have those things, so you have them in this, the other game as well. Gotcha. You can't get the Prelude of Light uh, from Until you she- beat the Forest Temple, I don't think. Okay. I know I literally just played through this game, like, three months ago. But I don't fucking remember shit. <laughs> no, that's but fair. That, that's such a neat idea that I feel requires a lot of dexterity that I don't know if children necessarily have. Yeah. Well, it it gave you a reasonable time window, uh-huh. but not an exceptional one, which is especially bad because, like, like if you turn the console on but the game doesn't boot up on the first try, does it is it still saved in the RAM or do you have to start from scratch again? Like, the, there was a lot of issues. It, to be completely frank, as cool of an idea as some of it sounds like it could have been, it was a stupid idea. Right. Like it, it was overly ambitious, as Rare tended to be at the time. Um, but it, it, even if it had been implemented exactly as planned, I don't think it would be everything that people thought that it would have been if it had been implemented. 
Um, but it wasn't, so people got to, to jerk off to the idea of how cool it would have been if it had been for years. Gotcha. Um, but they did, like, a hardware revision or something, or so they say, uh, that decreased the time from, like, the five or ten seconds, whatever it was, to one second. Oh. And also, I've heard people say that, uh, Nintendo just flat out told Rare not to do it. Oh. Because they didn't want people trying to rip the game out, slam the other game in, and get it turned back on, because they were worried about... Like damaging, damaging the, the stuff. Yeah. Um, so I, I don't know for sure. I don't know if it's known for sure exactly why or not. Uh, people talk about it all the time, and it's one of those things. It's like, what exactly is the actual completely correct information? Who fucking knows? True that. But, yeah, that's the gist of it uh, that we talked about here on your favorite uh, rare platformer, Ocarina of Time. <laughs> you know it. Uh, the only rare platformer that we're playing since we're not playing Banjo Kazooie probably in like one, maybe two more episodes of this. <laughs> Man, remember to to stay up to date with all these rare facts and more by following Players vs. Media. <laughs> uh huh. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know if Players vs. Media is ever gonna make any more videos. Ian no. and I did talk about it while we were while I was uh, over there. Hell yeah. But, I don't know. It's just one of those things. It's really hard to find time to do stuff with Ian a lot of the time. Yeah. He's a busy guy. He is. And so are you. Eh. Somewhat less than Ian, but yeah. Yeah. Alright, now do I talk to you in race? Th this part I always hate because it's like... Ah, here we go. Well, I thought that was... Maybe I have to write a second time. Yeah, I can't remember if it's writing a second time or... What? I don't want to hear how to ride. Yeah. I'm great at riding. Also, I really like how... Because uh, he has no idea that we're riding a Pona. Right. And it's like, surely he heard this song 10,000 times as she sang it all day, every day, for who knows how many years. And Epona doesn't look anything like any of the other horses. He only has two horses that are, like, ready to go. One of them is right next to me yeah. when we start, and we don't get on it. Because, you know, he was not going to let us ride Epona. He didn't just randomly grab that one that he's riding. Like, he specifically grabbed it. Because that was the only one he would ever let anyone touch other than Ganondorf. And yeah. if you wanted to get out of my fucking way... Because he specifically has plans to give this horse to Ganon, even though he already has a horse? Uh, he does, but he's just... I think he's just like, what do I have that I could give to Ganon to make him like me more? Horses? Yeah, let's give him the good horse. The good horse... The girls' room. <laughs> yeah, man, remember that show? I like eggs. <laughs> Me too, buddy. That's a line from from the girls' room segment. I am aware. You just you were so dismissive, like I'm legitimately saying I like eggs. I mean, hey, bro, listen. Not every line on that show was just like an absolute banger. You're right. I did. Oh, he's gonna beat oh, me! Oh, no. He's... I couldn't get around! Yeah. And I don't have enough money to try again. I I hate doing this because he acts like such a prick as if we didn't just, like, beat him. And he him. just took all my fucking money, even though I beat him! Yeah. Double or nothing for the horse versus not losing my money. Or whatever, I don't know. Yeah. Where's money? I think there's some up in what was Malin's room. Maybe still is. Do 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 Here we go. Fuck! Oh wait. All right, we're saved. Oh wait, no, we're not. So before doing this race, mm -hmm. uh, make a quick save. Never. Okay. I have absolute faith in myself. 
I would never need to stoop to such a level. Okay. But since you're such a backseat gamer and you're not going to shut up about it until I do, I guess I'll make one real quick. Okay. No, that's load. Oh, well, it's a good thing I didn't click there. <laughs> Man, remember that time we had to redo all that stuff in Twilight Princess that we didn't play? Yeah, I sure do. Cause I, uh, uh, he won't let me just do it, it again. I need more money. Well, I think you can go back into Malin's room and <laughs> steal ten more dollars. Hopefully. Man, the music in Ocarina of Time is really good. Yeah, it is. Do, 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 I know that's a really do, controversial do, 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 opinion that almost nobody shares, but I'm willing to put my life on the line and say that Ocarina of Time good music. I also think uh, Majora's Mask has good music. Yeah, it does. Not as good. Do, 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 do. Have I made you watch the, the Brental Floss? What if Ocarina of Time had lyrics video? Pretty sure I've never watched any Brental Floss videos, okay. so probably not. We should watch it sometime. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. A lot. We totally should. For reals. Totally should as you push me out the door saying, all right, I'll see you next time, bro. <laughs> see you in a month. Unless you want to watch more of the the pokemon cartoon or the that we don't have any episodes for because it may still be another year or two before yeah we ever the the guy who makes that just tweeted yesterday or maybe a couple days ago uh how apparently the plan was for it to take like exactly one year he didn't specify that it was the the show but presumably it was the show uh, we're talking about, uh, Starter Squad. I forget the guy who made it. Uh, but if you haven't seen it, it's really good. Also, it's taken a very, 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 very long time, uh, for it to, uh, finish, which it is still not done yet. And I've been watching it for a long time. Yeah, not even as long as it's been available. Oh, yeah, it was, mu it was multiple years old when I first found out about it. And it's only ten episodes long so far, I believe, and there's still two more episodes left. Uh, but the, what I drew from what they said was they expected it to be like exactly a year from the episode, the most recent episode uh, as of this recording and episode 11. And uh, it's been a lot longer than that. <laughs> I think it's yeah. been like at least two, maybe closer to three years now. Dang. Pass! Pass! Uh, get some carrots back. Yeah, push him out real far. There we go. Hell yeah. Suck it, Luigi. <laughs> Everybody hates you. I mean, Your this, year was terrible, they say. This version of Luigi, for sure. True. He's not good. No, he's not. I, I really do like the implication that he's so stupid that he just can't tell the horses apart. It is admittedly pretty funny. I think he's just horse racist and he thinks they all look the same. I mean, he's probably just one of those guys that's in, uh, you know, like, uh, ranching, but doesn't actually give a shit about the animals. I mean, that's for sure. Which actually makes this part really hilarious because now if we go back, mm -hmm. he's just a happy guy. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, he was, he hated working there when you're a kid. He fucking hates it if you talk to him. And, uh, which is like, fine, who doesn't hate their job, right? But then he, he takes over and he's super evil. And then you steal Epona and he's just like, he loses the ranch and he's just happy. And it's like... Was he secretly under the influence of Ganondorf's evil beforehand? And that's why he was such a grump when you were young and hated his boss and all that? Or did Ganondorf come in and be like, hey, I'm here for the horse you promised. He said, oh, actually, uh, I don't have it anymore. And he was like, oh, well, you're going to regret this. And he put an evil spell on him, causing him to be happy at his shitty job that he hates. I feel it's more that like he just kind of gave up after we 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 got the horse and was mm -hmm. like, you know what? I don't care anymore. 
I'm just gonna live here until I die. But he's like, because that makes it sound like he's just like, whatever. But he's really not. Like, he kind of loves the place. Uh, I don't know. Like, maybe it is just that, like, he defaults to, like, oh, well, fuck it. What can I do? I should just love what I do. I mean, maybe. But uh, we can talk more about that next time. Next time? Next time.